there are two papillary muscles in the left ventricle. In this patient, the posterior medial papillary muscle appears to be very prominent. This is what is known as a hypertrophied papillary muscle. The mitral valve leaflets of the left ventricle are attached to the papillary muscles via the chordae tendinae. Thus, the chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles prevent an eversion of the mitral valve leaflets during systole. Isolated papillary muscle hypertrophy, as in this case, may be considered to be a type of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The rest of the ventricular wall appears normal. Papillary muscle hypertrophy may produce certain minor changes in the ECG recording. Left ventricular strain pattern may be seen in the ECG in such cases. This was merely an incidental finding in this patient. Some patients of papillary muscle hypertrophy may be asymptomatic. However, some cases may be associated with Fabry disease or rheumatic mitral valvular disease. Both the long axis view as well as the short axis views of the papillary muscles are useful in diagnosing this condition. In the short axis view, we can see the hypertrophied posterior medial papillary muscle. The mitral valve leaflets appear grossly normal. Isolated papillary muscle hypertrophy is very rare. Very little literature is available on this condition. In this short axis view, we see that only the papillary muscle is hypertrophied, but the left ventricular wall itself is spared. MRI imaging may be required to confirm the diagnosis. Studies suggest that papillary muscle hypertrophy may signify a partial failure of the valve mechanism. In rare cases, it may be associated with sudden cardiac death. Color Doppler of the mitral valve shows normal flow across the mitral valve with flow around the hypertrophied papillary muscle. Final diagnosis, hypertrophied posterior medial papillary muscle. Further investigation may be needed to confirm the diagnosis.